Hello everyone, this is my recording of my findings for the Breeders' Cup on Saturday, the 7th of November. What I'm going to do is I'll probably break this into two videos, first five races and maybe the second four races. What I've done is I've gone through each race and created a short list um, of which I think these are the contenders. And then we'll talk about how we're going to bet them. Uh, how actually I'm going to bet them is I'm going to use the Sky Bet. And I'm going to put them in perms of maybe four races or five races. I might do it two or three times and try to do combination lucky thirty, lucky 31s and lucky 15s. I may also do all nine races together and look to get, you know, start with the four folds or the five folds and do perm combinations. I'll see how many bets it comes to. But that's what I'm doing. I'm, what I'm not trying to do is to, to do singles. Because, you know, there's not going to be a lot of value in the single markets. But getting them placed will be value. Anyway, we start off with the Phillies and Mares sprint. It's a seven furlong grade one. Phillies and Mares only. There's a field of eight with a non-runner. Now, the two at the head of the market are Gamine and Serengeti Empress. They're both very, very fast horses. And uh, either one of those could win. This horse here, Bell's the one. She's a deep closer. Now, the turf track has been favouring front runners on Friday, the turf track. But on the dirt track, it's not so much biased to the front runners. And Gamine is an out-and-out -out front runner. She's going to go fast to the front. If she gets a soft lead, she'll be very hard to beat. So that's why she's in for the permed each way multiple. I mean, I do like to take on these short price favourites, obviously. But those are the three. Gamine, Serengeti Impress, and Bell's the one. Bell's the one, maybe the value. Uh, she's going to be coming from the rear. And if they do get in a speed duel, she may be the one who might pick up the pieces if they're, you know, if they're paddling with a furlong to go because they've gone way too hard. Anyway, those are my three against the field for the Philly and Mare Sprint. The second race is the turf sprint. It's five and a half furlongs on fast ground. And again, I've done the same thing. I've been through the form, the stats, the trends, the history, the draw, and all the rest of it, the speed figures. And I came up with this short list of four. Now, Got Stormy, drawn wide, is a mare, five-year-old mare. She's perfectly capable of winning this. But you know I don't like, don't like mares. So... That's why, you know, she's a major contender, but you wouldn't want to be having a single on her. But she, you know, she's won for the perm multiple bet. Uh, Wild Man Jack, uh, I didn't really like him, so I'm going to knock him out. So the final three on the shortlist for the turf sprint, you've got to have grade one form or at least grade two form. You've got to be a specialist at five and a half furlongs. And this race is dominated by the American trained horses. So don't look beyond the Americans. American will win this. So that's my three there, and hopefully you're hoping in the perm each way multiples, you're hoping that Intermystic drops in and wins the race, because that then boosts your money running on to all the others. Let's go. The next race is the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, and uh, this is again my shortlist. Art Collector, Nick's Go, and Complexity. Complexity is the favourite, I believe. Just a bit light on, on number of runs this season for me. I will do him in the, I will do all of them in the permed each way multiple. But the one I really like here is Art Collector. And if you were fancying a single, he's going to get a perfect trip here. Because you've got Nick Sko, who is an out and out front runner. This horse is a stalker. He's going to sit in second, third, fourth place and, and lob along in behind the leaders. Hopefully they go too hard. And when they turn for home up the finishing straight, they'll all be knackered. And he might pick them up. Complexity is a very fast horse as well. These are the three fastest horses in the race. And uh, I expect one of these to win. There are others that you can give a big chance to. Uh, Mr. Freeze is one of them. But these are the three I like. You know, you might want to do some exotic betting. You could do like combination forecast doubles, you know, and things like that. There's all kinds of ways to play these, these bets rather than just trying to find the singles. If you fancy doing like the combo forecast... You know, that is something that you could do, you know, and uh, maybe try casts or whatever's available. There's also things like the pick five. I don't know if that's available. Have, have, have a look at some of the exotic betting for small stakes. 
have a look at the Tote Sport website. They might be doing some interesting markets because you can bet for a penny uh, on the Tote Sport, you know, on the Tote website. And here we go. The next race is the Philly and, May, Philly and Mayor Turf Grade 1. And uh, there's 13 going to post. And again, I've done the usual thing. I've done a short list. And uh, there's one American trained rushing fall for Chad Brown. He's got a brilliant record in this Phillies and Mares race. She's a big danger to everybody. The next one I like most is KN Pepper for Mrs. Harrington. She's drawn wide, but I don't see that's a problem. She could stay this trip very strongly, and uh, she, she would be a big danger. Audrea for, for James Fanshawe managed to win in the swamp in France. Whether she can run uh, back to that form in uh, on fast turf, is, uh, is most to be seen, but she is on the shortlist. So there you go. Those are my three against the field. Rushing Fall, Orderaya, and KN Pepper in the Philly and Mayor's Turf. This this is another one. KN Pepper could be worth a small each way single if you want an each way single. And again, you could do the combo forecast, combo, combo tricast. If there's place pots and, and pick fours and pick sixes and all those things, all those kind of exotic bets. Worth having a look. Well, we're doing okay for time here. We're only just six minutes into the video and we're nearly halfway through, or we are halfway through. So let's see if we can get it all done. 7.36 is the Breeders' Cup sprint on dirt, six furlongs. And uh, I've been through this race and there are four here that really tick all the boxes. Uh, the one I like in particular is Diamond Oops. Uh, but I'm not a fan of this jockey, Florent Giroux. So it make, puts me off. But I've got four in there. The one I'm going to leave out is Forenzi Fire. He has been to, has been to three, three Breeders' Cups and been fifth, sixth, eighth, or whatever it is. He, he's never been good enough to win a Breeders' Cup race. Uh, it'd be amazing if he could do it this time. But I don't see him being good enough. So I'm going to knock him out. The short price favour of Yulpon is very, very fast, and he is virtually the sole speed. You might see him come straight out of stall 10, might take him half a furlong to get to the lead, but when he gets to the lead, I expect that down the back straight, he will, you know, go on and be well clear. It will be a matter of whether we can hold on, but horses like Whitmore, he may be seven years old, but he is a classy animal, and he has got a strong finishing kick. Same as Diamond Oops. So again, these would be in my, uh, this would be for my combination forecast, combination tricast. Maybe include Frenzy Fire if you're going to do a combination tricast. So there you go. That's the sprint. Uh, again, I'll be, as I say, putting these in with minimum stakes each way perms. And I'll work out how much the bet is going to come to. Okay, everybody. This is the uh, Breeders' Cup Mile on turf for you and we've got some british and european raiders in here none of which i particularly like in this spot circus maximus lopi fernandez siskin don't like any of them safe voyage but there's a lot of talk about this horse called uni over here for chad brown but i didn't like him when i went through his profile there's another one here factor this uh, a lot of people fancy but this was my final shortlist when i went through the race and I've never been a fan of Kamiko. For me, he wants a straight mile and a straight gallop. Uh, every time he's been round a bend, he's he's not run very well. I'm, I'm not a fan of him. So at a short price, I'm going to leave him out. Now, the only problem with this horse, if this horse had had a run 30 days ago, Halliday, even if he'd have been second or third, I would have been all over him. But then again, you probably wouldn't get the price. But I really like this horse, Halliday, in this spot. He's a front runner. There's not a lot of other front runners in the pace. There's a lot of hold up horses. Um, and he, trained by Todd Pletcher, he's an absolute master. And uh, he, he should have had a run in one of the trial races about a month or so ago. But he was found to have uh, an infected hoof or something like that. And he didn't make it to the trial. So that is the one thing that put me off having a, a proper each way bet on him. You, you know, he's worth a point each way. But again... Uh, Ivar beat Raging Bull. They were first and second in the same race 35 days ago. Raging Bull is a deep hold-up horse. I'm not certain that is going to be ideal because all the 
all the turf track uh, races have been won by front runners so far. But there could be a speed burn up here. And uh, he, he is a very good horse. And he might come storming home and pick up the pieces and get in the frame. So those are my three for the win. And uh, that would be my combination forecast, tricast sort of selections. There you go. That is the turf mile. Just three races to go. Next race is the Distaff. It's a nine furlong race for fillies and mares on the dirt. Last year's winner, Monomoy Mono Girl, is 13 from 14 lifetime starts. Won this race last year, and she may well win again. Uh, Swiss Sky Diver. Now, I don't think this is the right trip for her. She's second favourite, nine to four. She's a very, very good horse. And she had a very, very tough race beating the Colts. And uh, she's got she's got a lot to do for me. She'd probably be in the frame, almost certainly is every time she runs. But the horse I like in this spot most is Horologist for William Mott. Now this horse has been trained for the race, been brought along nice and steadily. The trip is going to be ideal. A strong gallop is going to be on ideal. There's going to be a lot of pace on, and uh, that would be my one. So I would knock out maybe Swiss Skydiver. And have these three in my permed each way. Because Monomoy Girl beat Swiss, Swiss Skydiver quite comfortably. But if anything is going to upset them, the upper cart, it might be one of these two here. Ollie's Candy, she's very consistent. She gets the perfect trip. She, you know, if, the, if, the, if there's a suicidal pace on, she's a deep closer as well. She could uh, pick up the pieces. So those are my three in the distaff. The penultimate race is the mile and a half Breeders' Cup Turf Grade 1. And uh, this is where the Europeans are going to get on the board. They might get on the board in one of the other turf races, like the mile. But I definitely think one of these three is going to win the race here. Ryan Moore is on Magical. She's got pieces of form that are far superior to anything that these others have done. Lord North is in the race. He qualified for this by winning the Prince of Wales, but he's got to stretch out to a mile and a half. Friend of mine reckons he wants fast ground. Said all along, the whole, but they've never tried him on it. That's what I don't understand. But I, you know, I, I've had a couple of really good touches on Lord North this year. I don't need to be betting him here. Going into the unknown, never tried the distance before. And he has got a tremendous turn of foot. But I think Magical's going to win. But I'm going to put these three in against the field. Mogul, the three-year-old. Three-year-olds do have a good record in this race. And he's a grade one winner on turf now. He's another one who may want fast ground. And he might that might be the making of him. There you go. So, and the harder they go, the better. So they're stopping in the home straight. But Magical is the one for me. But those are the three I'm going to put in. Magical, Tanawa and Mogul in my multiple bet. And the final race on the card is the Classic, which is coming up right now. And it's uh, obviously the most valuable race on the card, $2 million. Ten runners, but there's only three that I consider. There's maybe a fourth, but there's three here that I've, I've looked at. The other one is Authentic, but he had a very, very hard race last time out. I prefer his stable mate. Uh, maximum risk. In fact, he's got three hot runners in the race, Bob Baffert, and I think he's going to win it with either Improbable or Maximum Security. Maximum Security won that multi-million dollar race in Saudi Arabia earlier in the year. He just finished second on his previous run. I think that was behind him, his stable mate Improbable, but that was a five-runner race. Uh, and the other one is Tis the Law, who's been running exceptionally well for a three-year-old. And uh, unfortunately, you can see the prices; they're all well fancied. But again, if we, if I, if you know, with the with the each way lucky fifteens and thirty ones and what have you that I'm doing for minimum units, if I can get a couple of earlier winners run, a couple of winners on the ticket, you know, you'll have that money running on to all of these to win and to place. That's the idea. So I'm going to work out my stakes for that. Those are my selections. Pause the video, make a note of the selections, and I'll leave it up to you to find some interesting ways to bet these horses. I don't have any standout. This is a banker bet this year. There's none of that in here. It's a very difficult track to bet on. There's track bias everywhere. 
So I hope that's of some interest. Mark down the, the short lists and, uh, you know, like on Skybet, you can put in the three selections in one race uh, and then, you know, and then it will allow you to create each way multiples uh, like that. I think the minimum unit is 10p there, though. But uh, you might be able to do something on the tote because they do take a minimum bet of 1p. Okay? All the very best. Speak to you soon. Have a good evening. And I will be available on Twitter so during the evenings. So if you want to ask me about the racing, um, come and comment to me at Right Judge I Am. And uh, I'll be watching the football on one, one TV and uh, racing on another. So there you go. All the very best now.